Hi there. The coconut crab scheme I use on my Tyranids makes heavy use of washes to get acceptable results in minimal time, and while I don't use quite the same process on my non-Tyranid models, I do have a similar technique to speed up my painting. Most hobbyists are probably familiar with Games Workshop's basic painting style, which for a tabletop quality paint job typically consists of a base coat, wash, reapplying the base coat, first highlight, and second highlight. I find that this gives a clean result, but is tedious and time consuming, and it can be difficult to get smooth transitions between layers. The method I've used on my Stormtroopers, Death Corps, Renegade Militia, and Skatari changes up the order of operations and uses one particular product. So instead of the Games Workshop order of operations, I do Base Coat, First Highlight, Optionally Second Highlight, and Wash with Viejo Black Glaze. Today I'm going to demonstrate this process on an old Imperial Guard Stormtrooper and explain the logic at each step. To start with, I Base Coat the entire model. This is by far the most time-consuming part of the process, particularly on a complex sculpt like this one, so it's all downhill from here. I'll put a list of all the paints used in the description. Note that I'm not just painting this one trooper. Batch painting is more efficient, but I'll just use this one as a demonstration. So with the base coat applied, I'll use my workhorse brush, a Raphael Series 8404, size 1, and apply an edge highlight anywhere the model has a hard edge or geometry that I want to call out. Here I'm starting with the uniform and using a lighter blue to pick out all the creases and folds. This is the model with the uniform highlighted, so now I'll move on to the armor, leather, and other materials. At this point, everything is highlighted the same way, except for the metallics. To give the metal more of a sense of reflecting light, I've painted my highlight color onto all of the upper surfaces, not just the edges. All in all, I go pretty quickly on this step. If I make any mistakes during this process, and I regularly do, it's easy to clean up with the base colors. Now it's time for the second highlight. On my Death Corps and Renegade Militia, I omitted this step in the interest of pure speed. But these Stormtroopers have a lot of detail that I really want to pop. So I take my next highlight color and apply it to just the extreme edges that catch the light, as well as corners where two edges meet. Here I've finished applying this step to the entire model. The only exception is the leather, where I've applied a wash of VMC Smoke instead. Here's the model at this stage. I think the highlights look pretty good, but it obviously lacks shading. It's time to fix that and tie the model together. In preparation for the next step, I give the entire model a coat of gloss varnish. And now the magic. For this model, I'm using Viejo Model Color Black Glaze, but Viejo also sells a brown glaze that would be suited to warmer color schemes or a dirtier appearance. I mix one part black glaze to two parts water, and apply it to the entire model with an old brush. What's significant about black glaze is a very useful combination of properties. It has a dark pigment for strong shading, is partially transparent, flows very well, and remains viscous even after dilution. This combination makes it great at shading recesses, but avoids the stark transitions you often see with pin washes, while still having more contrast between recesses and raised surfaces than the Citadel washes. When applied over a glossy surface to help it flow, the translucency allows it to, per the name, glaze together the highlights that have been applied so far. As the wash dries, I periodically wick away any excess pooling, which tends to occur around the ankles and boots. Once the wash is fully dry, I use my normal varnish combo of Pledge Floor Gloss followed by AK Interactive Ultra Matte, then I can finish with basing, glowing eyes, and any other final details. Here's the pre-wash stage compared to the finished model. You can see that while the model now has the shading it needed, the wash hasn't touched the brightest highlights or pooled unnaturally, so there's no need to go back and clean up afterwards. And here's the sample model along with the rest of the batch. By eliminating the stage of reapplying the base coat, I was able to get these done in significantly less time than it would take using a more conventional method. On vehicles and other models with lots of flat surfaces, the same technique works with a bit of modification. I typically use two layers of a 1 to 5 mix of glaze and water, which produces comparable shading to one layer of the 1 to 2 mix, but with less risk of pooling or staining on large flat areas. Since this wash is done after all the highlighting, it combines well with zenithal highlighting via airbrush, similar to an oil wash. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in the glow effects I used on the eyepieces, plasma coils, and auspexes on the stormtroopers, I'll be covering those in my next video. For now, thanks for watching.